Yeah, but I don't care about, like, I don't ever want a camera on you. Like I, you could literally go to Vegas for a whole weekend, lose your phone and I don't need a camera on you. I just want to see Diglett. Clip that, clip that. <laughs> Let's go home. Welcome back to Wild Till Nine. Morning. Yeah. Hello. How's everybody? Yeah. Uh, this is the uh, second time we sat down to do this podcast today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And although the first uh, time didn't end up working out, the tree directly outside our studio has been trimmed. Oh, it looks great. Uh, it looks sculpted. incredible. It looks amazing. Yeah, it's a, it's, and I'm so glad that they did that, that the exact scheduled time of our recording, that was perfect. I I can't tell you just how great their timing was. No, 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 it was, it was incredible. And I'm so glad that their tree looks uh, impeccable. I will say there's something about doing this from home that's constantly humbling. It's like, oh, you guys had a plan? Oh, you have to like make a show? Oh yeah, no, no. Oh, well, I'm going to take a big old poopy. Still a bedroom. <laughs> on your plan. Um, uh, Welcome back. If you've already purchased your merch, thank you. Oh my God, I know the merch orders do be rolling in. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I know not everyone reads the description box, but in last week's episode, there Let's was a- 99.9% .9 of normal people never read. Do not read anything. the description box, yeah. right. Yeah. You know what? I also think about too, like when I watch podcasts, which I watch most of them on YouTube, I never open the description box. Anyways, we left a little Easter egg in the form of a pre-sale and discount code link, um, but it's also on Instagram. So um, that was a thing for this this past. Oh, I just said that's a thing. Oof. That's so embarrassing. You're engaged. That I thank God. We did a thing. Thank God. Um, but yeah, so we we did a little we did a little pre-sale, a little discount code codely codely and uh, yeah, just hang codely wodelies. Codely wodelies. There's something about like trying to you know put the words to like, okay, how do we want this to work out? And you just feel so stupid. Are you kidding me? I've been doing internet giveaways for years. What do you want to know? To be clear, we were not running a giveaway. Oh no, we were not running a giveaway because that is super, there, there no are sweepstakes. many rules. There's no giveaway. No, 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 There's no, no, no. This was simply a promotional opportunity. This was a, the act that we actually truly weren't giving away anything. <laughs> right. Anyway, point is, point is uh, it's just like, you have to like break things down, but it's like you question like, you know, like you, when you write a sentence and you read it nine times, that by the ninth time you go, did I spell the correctly? Well, uh, the, you know, I tried to say, who was I trying to, I made a, I made a, who, what's a, this is a really good story so far, obviously. Well said. I was trying to call someone incompetent. And you called them incontinent, didn't you? No, 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 I couldn't spell it. I could not spell it. I was texting it and I was like, God, I was like, that's like, how can everyone be so incompetent? And literally I had to autocorrect it. And in that moment, I didn't tell the person I was texting that I had to autocorrect that, but it was a humbling moment for me where I uh, want, my brain wanted to go incompetent. 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 Yes. Okay. A small little extra little blip in the middle. You know what? I think that's part of your personality. You know, I, I think so too. You know, remember like when you had to write things and spell check didn't just constantly fix things when you got to the end of a word? Literally, it, no. I I would be genuinely uh, f fearful, afraid, shock scared. I would do anything to not have to spell three syllable words in public. Mm, yes, tough. What's your go-to word again that you always misspell? You've got one and I can't remember what it, what it is. It's something like miscommunication or something. No. It's, um, I feel like this one's got like a double Fuck. M or a yeah. double S and I can't remember which one it is. I'll think about it. Okay. All right. Fuck. Now that's going to crush me. We'll come back to it. Um, we'll this. Should we give a Diggy update? Oh man, I know. There were lots of questions about Diggy uh, in the comments of last week's episode. And um, it's so crazy because we recorded that and a couple of days later, we had uh, d the most doggy drama that we've ever had. And I will say like, we have had just doggy drama on doggy drama since the day Diggy came home and he is worth every, every sleepless night and every tear shed and every, um, every increase in resting heart rate. And every uh, formerly no longer with a rug. And every chair, dollar submitted to patent insurance. Surface. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh There's man. There's something about um, adopting a, I don't want to say senior. A pre-senior pup. A, an advanced adult. 
and advanced. Mm, that almost sounds worse, I think. There's something about adopting the equivalent to a 50 year old um, son. Okay. That is wildly expensive, but also just like, you just don't know what you're getting into. We have no idea. And you we have know, no we know, idea. We know Moose's quirks. Yeah. I mean, even if you adopt a dog at like two, like you still have no idea. They live two whole years without you beforehand. Seven seems like a lot longer than two. I mean, that's five more years than two. Can't argue with that math. Can't argue with that. That math do be mathing. Yes. Incompetent attendance. Incompetent tense. No, uh, we're, 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 I feel like now that we've got a full 8K render of his entire internal uh, body, Oh, we've got Oregon. x-rays, we've got blood work, we've got MRIs. They sent us home with a, like a, like a, 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 flash a modern floppy disk yeah. of uh, his MRI this last time around. I tried to actually open it up, um, but I think you have to have a specific software to look at MRIs. Or do you just need to have a Windows computer? Oh, that might be it too. I didn't even think about that. That might be the case. Mm. 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 Oh, is on it, no worries. Okay. TSJ has been on it, by the way. Tech support Jeremy has been doing all the things. Not only has our newest health uh, update inspired the new installation from TSJ of pup cams in both oh. of the dog crates, which is just another level of um, being a responsible parent. Well, as I alluded to at the end of last <laughs> no, week. I, I want to be your clear. It does not make you a not responsible, an irresponsible parent to not have a camera in your crate. Um, I'm just trying to overcorrect for our helicoptery parentness. Let's let's find a new word for our. Um, hmm. See, had I known that you were never going to take but your eyes let's off look the at camera. Me right now, let's see what he's doing. I'm not kidding. The amount of times that Lauren and I will be in a conversation that I thought she was engaged. No. Not at all. And I'll just look over and she'll just be looking oh. at the Diggy cam. I'm going to put a screenshot up, up on the screen of what Diglett looks like right now in the cam. And also at night, it goes night vision. So you can still see and it's black and white. During the day, By you the got way, full color. I'm a little peeved because I put all this effort in today to, mm -hmm. to be able to like, you know, airplay exactly what we're looking at. And I wish that I could see what you were looking at in our little monitor over there. You know, you know what pup cam looks like. I want to show the people what pup cam looks like. Lauren, if I told you, babe, you know what it looks like in his crate. You don't have to look at it. Well, you would never would tell you, me that. What would you say to me? You would never tell me what that. What would you say to me? You would never tell me that. You know, we're going to get into this later. This um, this double standard thing. <sighs> but anyway, Diggy, uh, have you given any context on any of your 19 um, channels that I do watch all of them mm -hmm. in real time? I just haven't watched today. Um, yeah, I did an update on Instagram, on Instagram stories. And by the time this goes up, there will have been a vlog about it. Okay. Um, but yeah, no, we haven't, we haven't, I mean, I, I don't, it's hard to make an announcement. Come, you know what I mean? Like, uh, like how do you, how do you spread the news? So Diggy, um, uh, Sweet Diglett. Is epileptic. Diggy has epilepsy. So for those who didn't go to med school, he- um, has Caesar salads, also known as seizures. Mm -hmm. um, apparently, uh, well, for the rest of his life. Right. So, okay. So here's, uh, I feel like that you, know, you delivered that really intensely. He does have Caesar salads. Um, and yeah, Caesar salads. He does have Caesar, he's got the Caesar wheezies. Yeah. So well, Caesar dressing. Diggy had a seizure um, when he was just a little bit older than six with the previous owners. I think he did a short bout of short-term medication for seizures, didn't have another one, potentially came off the medication. I'm not entirely sure. Again, it's not it's not like fully clear medical history, but yep. um, we knew upfront that he had had uh, a seizure and seizures can be from dehydration. They can be from a number of different things. Um, and obviously they can be from things that are more serious like meningitis or a tumor of some kind. And there's like a whole long laundry list of more serious causes. Um, and so we obviously were aware of that and, um, he had well, been, we were aware of it, but like, we didn't know what, what caused it. We didn't really know if I mean, there was, this is, it's yeah. a, a, across the board epilepsy, yeah. you know what I mean? Can just come from so many different things. Um, so at board and train, he'd been there for two and a half weeks with miles and literally uh, the sweet man, sweet Diggy, but also sweet man Miles because he had never seen a seizure before in a human or a dog. And we got to gift him the gift of his first experience. And he was such a fucking champ. Oh my God. Like truly he yeah. could not have handled the situation better. And like, he genuinely probably saved Diggy's life. I, I, I mean, that sounds dramatic, but I could not be more serious. I mean, it's really difficult to kind of comprehend 
how you need to be able to figure out a plan for a thing you've never seen happen before with somebody else's dog in real time. Mm -hmm. It sucks. Yeah. But like, this stuff's always going to happen. You can't escape it, of course. Mm -hmm. But it's like, how are you supposed to be prepared for what to do no matter what happens to, I guess that's the line of work that he's in. Totally. And yeah. I'm sure that he's, you know, had to give a dog the the Heimlich remover before. Right, <laughs> the Heim right. Ye old Heimlich remover. R remove the tennis ball. Of the Heimlich. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right. Um, so we had a seizure around 11 p.m. He gave us a call and he didn't see that one necessarily. He yeah. just heard it first. And, um, and for those who don't know what seizures are, at all, I, I, I feel like I know more about seizures now over the, like, the last couple of weeks, but mm -hmm. it's a lot of things. I feel like they're, they, they, they lose control of the, a lot of the parts of their body mm -hmm. and they're thrashing around, they're making noises, they're foaming at the mouth, mm -hmm. they're not coherent, but they're not passed out. Um, it's a lot of scary stuff all kind of packaged into one. It's horrible. Like, I, don't, I still don't feel like I understand outside of the fact that like the brain's not getting what oxygen. The brain's not getting oxygen and it's misfiring of um, like electric electricity in your brain is essentially. I always happens. forget that like we, there's literally electricity in us. Yeah, like, running through, yeah, exactly. Which makes sense. And we know that, that Diggy has a huge brain with so many folds that's just packed with knowledge. And so I understand the stress that Diggy's brain is under because he is just, he's just filled to the brim with knowledge and high For IQ. For context, um, Miles had been at our house earlier that day and he did inform us that some of the things that we had discussed in the first session <laughs> were probably off the table <laughs> as far as results go um, with certain breeds or certain individual dogs, mm -hmm. or in this case, Diggy. You know what, listen, we don't have a Belgian Malinois. We know no. what different dogs are capable of. Mm -hmm. And we just want a happy- Yeah, you say that, but I've seen a couple bull terriers on the internet that are pretty resourceful. And they're probably mixed with something else. They're not, they're not Diggy. They're not, they're not, they're not Diggy. If we're known for a lot of things. Uh, mm -hmm. Agile, intelligent, eloquent dogs. Mm. Not one of them. So Diggy had a seizure around 11 p.m. and he gave us a call and gave us like a full rundown. And so we have an incredible vet in LA called Modern Animal, who we have access to 24 hours a day via app, via video call, via text and all the things. Lauren just switches back and forth from the Diggy Cam to Modern Animal. Just oh yeah, this might, cam, it consumes my life. Text back with yes. the vet, Diggy Cam, yes. what's Bubby's doing, yeah, what's Diggy Bubby's Cam. Doing? Yeah. What does the poop look like? Is yeah. everyone's poop healthy? Mm -hmm. So I was able to get some feedback from the vet and she basically gave us um, like a list of guidelines in terms of, so we were able to get an appointment at the vet for the next day, which was amazing. Another part of the app that isn't so incredible. We were talking about just how lucky that is. Too. So lucky, so yeah. lucky. So we were able to get this an appointment. 11 p.m. at night. Right, and there was an appointment at like 4 p.m. the next day, but she was like, if he has another one um, and if it lasts longer, if he takes longer to come out of the seizure and kind of like come back to, uh, go to the urgent care. And so I, uh, TSJ helped me set up a new mode, a new focus mode on my phone so that when we went to sleep, the only person that would be able to make my phone make a noise was Miles. And sure enough, 2 a.m. rolls around. Noise. Oh, literally, my heart fucking shattered when I heard my phone go off in the middle of the night. Literally, because you know instantly, because yeah. there's no reason anyone's calling you. I mean, that's probably like the first glimpse that we have into what it's going to be like to have a real child someday. Mm -hmm and they're not home and you get that call at a ridiculous hour. And right. it's, it's like, it's too early for the East Coast to be up doing work and it's too late for Ugh. anything to be like- I could cry hey, just thinking about it again. Yeah. Um, so Miles was amazing. He took a video of the seizure, which is horrible to watch, like absolutely horrible. Yeah. But it was so incredibly helpful to have that as an asset for the vet. And then also to just like as a general timer to like know how long the seizure was. Cause obviously you're not getting brain to the oxygen. So when uh, it goes- or, or oxygen to the brain. Yeah. Not getting brain to the oxygen. Not getting brain to the, is that what I said? Yeah. You're not getting brain to the oxygen? Mm -hmm. Right. So I, you're not getting brain to the oxygen or oxygen is also not going to the brain. Either one. And after a certain amount of time, obviously that becomes wildly dangerous. So having kind of um, a general idea of how long the seizure was is really helpful. So Miles puts Diggy in the car and luckily we're just 10 minutes down the street. And so hightailed it to us. We got in the car, got him to urgent care. And this urgent care is the same one that we went to last time that had an incredible neurologist where we went through that whole spiral of someone giving us uh, misinformation that Diggy had a broken vertebrae in his spine in like his neck. You know, if we had more time, just to call back to be like, hey, by the way. Yeah, just for the future, in case another bull terrier comes in, 
ever. You don't want to flip their world upside down. Yeah. And so anyway, we got to see that neurologist again within, I'm not kidding. We were to the ER and home back in bed within an hour and a half, which yeah. was insane. And Diggy ended up staying, I think for about 14 hours, maybe. Yeah. We got him there at 2 a.m. And then he was home by maybe like- and two meals. Four or yeah. five. Um, but yeah, he got blood work. Just one meal. Uh, he actually didn't really end up eating anything. He ate yeah. when he got home, but um, I had dropped off some some kibbies and he wasn't yeah. interested in eating anything. Were they individual packaged? Yes. And did you put blueberries in it? Yes. And did you put his his yes. favorite? Okay, got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They got the fish oil, got the, the uh -huh. pre and probiotic. Yes, and a little, little brown bag with the name on the front yes, with like a heart. heart on it. Yes, yeah, of course, it. of yeah. course. No, totally. It's, it, it does like what every cool kid wants. <laughs> Exactly, diggle it, diggle it. And so anyways, he was able to get blood work, a full uh, three view chest X-ray and neck and spine and to the neurologist for an MRI. Do you know how long it would take us to get an MRI on our brains as humans? I would be lucky to get one this quarter. L literally this quarter. And the fact that Diggy was able to get one, it, it, and so anyway, so uh, the TLDR is that Diggy's, all his tests and scans and things came back really positive. And we are now taking um, two anti-seizure meds a day for the foreseeable future. And Diggy got great new headshots. And Diggy got great new headshots. So that's great. And if anyone's wondering, you know, how he's doing, uh, if you've seen any of the photos with the bandana. Oh my God. That was taken after also, the silver lining the of all of this is that we got to have Diglett back for 10 days. He's was, going back to school. Um, we just had to make sure that he was adjusting well to his anti-seizure meds, but he's going just for a week. After speaking with our physician, we decided that it would be best if he spent 10 days with us. Right. And to, they prescribed some yeah. snuggle time. <laughs> they, and they prescribed that. And Lauren is um, adamant that he's also prescribed a soft blankie and a, a soft crate on the way back that he didn't get the first time around. He needs it. <laughs> I don't disagree. <laughs> Whatever, I can't wait for like Lauren to be like, and then if you could just put this camera right here and then just plug it into the fastest Wi-Fi you have and then <laughs> never turn it off. Thank you. Lauren like wanted me to try and like somehow find a way to hide a camera on Diggy's no, body. No, I mean, yes, Lauren, but no. You gonna lie to everybody? Yes, but no. But if I could do it? Yes, but no. That's what I thought. You would be, if you were just a creepy weird dude, you yeah. would be the worst. Yeah, but I don't care about, like, I don't ever want a camera on you. Like I, you could literally go to Vegas for a whole weekend, lose your phone and I don't need a camera on you. I just want to see Diglett. Clip that, clip that. <laughs> I just want to see our pups. No, I get it. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Listen, I don't think it's misguided at all. Okay. So <laughs> we were doing that. And like, uh, once again, as I alluded to last week, thank God I am full-time unemployed right now. Oh my God, literally. Because I don't know how we would keep all this shit like going. Yeah. Because Lauren's a working woman. Mm -hmm. She got her nine to five. Mm -hmm. She got things she has to do. Sometimes like, shit just falls apart. And it's mm -hmm. like, who's going to catch that? Mm -hmm. Not a worry. Mm -hmm. Tech support, Jeremy. Stay at home mom, Jeremy. What else can I do for you? Neighborhood Karen, Jeremy. Neighborhood Karen, Jeremy is thriving right now. We just got one of our street signs replaced because Jerry's, Jeremy, sub, Jerry, Jeremy submitted to our neighborhood Karen uh, incident report. Yep. That app or something. I, I've had um, <laughs> I've had some sidewalks. Some sidewalk cracks. Um, repaid. Mended. I've had some lights fixed. Mm -hmm. I've had uh, a- uh, Street lamps. Street lamps. Yep. I've had someone to kept them check out um, the street tree that mm -hmm. was, was taken down that, that mm -hmm. I want them to replant. Just get things done. I love it. You know, I will say the way you do anything is the way you do everything. Mm -hmm. Like I could totally find a way to be 50 hours a week busy for the rest of my life. Okay. Without ever having a corporate job. Sure. Despite not actually being interested in not working for the rest of my life. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. So there's that. Um, and then I noticed a few people um, in our comments ask where Devin is, which is a great question. Uh, we with all the changes in the last few months, have specifically and very strategically looked at where we want to bring this pod mm -hmm. and some other things that are in the works. And we realized that the team we had in place wasn't the best fit for what we wanted to be. Mm -hmm. So we are not announcing anything yet. Still in the process of finding some people and putting some things together. We're in a building phase. And there's going to be more on that to a, come. A building and restructuring phase. But Devin's wonderful. Devin's great. Mm -hmm. He's not working with us anymore, mm -hmm. uh, which is why you don't hear from him. But you might see some new faces or hear some new things. Soonish. Soonish. Soon yeah. Moving on. 
Um, I don't actually have a good reason to say the word sugu, but I wanted to say we should sugu now into the post that Jeremy uh, popped onto Wild Till Nine and also his personal that I I I never don't get I I never don't get to see the like submissions of questions because normally like I do this side of things. And so today I get to be just thoroughly surprised by all of the submissions from the Tillies. So, okay, what was the, what was the exact thing that you posted? What was like the, uh, the, the ask? So essentially was uh, ask fiance Jeremy, mm -hmm. right? Um, which for whatever reason, my spell check continues to make mine the wrong one every mm, time. With double E. With double E, mm. and it drives me crazy. Mm. And every single person that corrected me for that, mm -hmm. touche, you're, you're correct. Yeah. Um, so I basically asked, ask fiance Jeremy the questions that you'd be way too embarrassed to ask any guy in your real world. I cannot wait. When I tell you that one, we could have 17 episodes Just going through these questions. There are so many of them. But there are some common themes. And as opposed to just like telling you what the common themes are, I'll, um, I'll let you see about 97 variations of the same question every once in a while, just to kind of get the point. But like, it's shocking just how like, although there's like, you know, some variables and some differences, there's like three or four questions that every girl in the fucking world seemingly has that all seem pretty simple to me that apparently no one's been able to ask. We don't have penises. No, I get it. We don't have penises. All you want to know about what, like literally every girl is just like, What's having the penis like? Don't skip the details, start from square yeah, one. Yeah, obviously. So the only way to start make this- Start from square one. Right, so the only way to make this game <laughs> a little bit funner though, as opposed to just me just like blabbing out my opinions. Would Donna approve you saying the word funner? Funner? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Uh, would Donna approve of anything we talk about in this podcast? Would Donna approve the fact that she inspired the whole newest collection of uh, you're a fucking, fucking delight? delight. Yeah. I think that's one of those things we just don't need to- no, to share with her. No, no. And luckily I feel like our couch is smothered in balls of blankets and they're never like laid out flat. Didn't so she'll we, never didn't see. Didn't we go like that balls thing. Mm, just, mm. just our couch is just covered in balls. We do have quite a few balls on our, actually I guess we just only no, have No, we have no balls. No one has balls. I'm right here. You have balls and from- I've got grapefruits as we discussed last I know, I was, I was just about to say, I was yeah. gonna bring your grapefruit balls back into this. <laughs> Thank you. They're so uh, But uh, to make this a little bit more fun, uh, as opposed to just me, sprouting off my ideas. Mm -hmm. I would love to get your- Oh, I can't wait. Take on what you think my correct answer is uh -huh. on just about all these ahead of time. And I- Is it your correct answer or as a penis haver, a um, male identifying man? I think, I, I want you to go with what you think I'm gonna say. Okay, okay, um, okay. And then two, uh, realistically, I think you're gonna do great. No, I have like a lot of faith in you. I also am not someone who's ever been scared to ask uh, any boyfriend in the past, like a, a random question like that. Like I'm not, I'm not shy in that oh, regard. Lord, no, nothing, nothing. Like, mm -hmm. um, this may sound stupid, but like, and then insert a question that you can't imagine having <laughs> the balls to ask. <laughs> if you were in her situation. <laughs> I need to just share something with you that Mia texted me today because it was such an, is my phone dead? Oh no, it was such an accurate representation. Oh my God, wait, let's just take a peek at, oh, Dickie Cam, he really hasn't moved in whatever it's been, how many minutes? Oh, just snoozing. Uh, okay, this is uh, this is poop related. I don't know if anyone God. needs a warning um, or anything, but- the, the amount of poop related questions as well. And I'm like, I, next. Okay, Mia sent me this post. And so the post is, um, it says, it is my most profound belief that if you hold in diarrhea, it will turn into normal shit after a couple hours. <laughs> and she sent it with no caption, just no context. And I was like, oh my God, I think this every single time. I was like, if you just give it some time, it'll just like, like pack up into a regular poo by just like force of pressure of being in the, whatever the last intestine is. Is it your, it's large at the end? It's small first and then large? What happens? Anyway, by the end of it, I just feel like by force of pressure, it has to just pack up into a poo. And so Mia was like, anyway, I was like, you have no idea how many times I've thought about that. I, by the way, what is, what is, is that not true? Oh, I have no idea. Probably not. The account's called Trash Can Paul. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, you have no idea how many times I have thought that. And this was just such an accurate summary of me and I's friendship. Um, she was like, you just didn't even have to tell me that for me to know that you already You guys that. say some of the most like uh, uh, blase, 
vile shit to each other. Does diarrhea, also Maggie calls, Zach and Maggie call diarrhea die die. And I, I that's so much nicer. The word, die die, die? The word diarrhea is gross. I think die die is much better. Die die, anything's better than diarrhea. Yeah, exactly. Just I just don't diarrhea enjoy talking about feces. Into regular poop. Like am I the only other like person in the world that seemingly gets grossed out? <gasps> oh my God. Okay, but well, this is actually, I guess, a Quora answer. Um, this is a Reddit answer. If it's on the internet. Mm-hmm. Reddit's more accurate than okay. most. Okay, yeah, point. so Reddit says, if you hold it in die die long enough, will it become normal poop? Okay, well, I'm so glad that we can debunk this live. And this is not just for the penis holders. This is also 11 years ago, so By I don't- way, This will be the first and last fact check on the day. Oh, this is on the subreddit Ask Science. This feels legit. 11 years ago, so science has changed a little bit, but I feel like in the way of die die, probably not. Yeah, no. Okay, um, if you hold in die die long enough, will it become normal poop? Well, it depends. If it's still hanging out in your large intestine, then yeah, more water will be absorbed. If it's hanging out in the rectum, if you ignore the urge, sometimes things are returned to the lower intestine where more water will be absorbed. If it isn't returned, then more water won't be absorbed. <gasps> the thing you need to take is that when you have die die, that's one of your body's ways of telling you something needs to get out of Dodge, I wouldn't ignore that. <gasps> that is shocking. Remember when you learned that you couldn't, um, you you could uh, you could breathe out your fart. You could never actually like prolong a yeah. fart <laughs> until it just goes away. <laughs> like it's either gonna come out that end. This is a science podcast. Can we change our category? Yeah, this is a science. We, yeah, we. If you're exactly. here for relationships, sign off. Go to something else. If you want to wow. hear about science, I'm. More perplexed and confused, I think, at this point than I am uh, huh. uh, feeling good about answers. But like that makes sense. I can't wait to send this to Mia. Okay. She needs the update. She so, needs to know. Uh, no particular order outside of wanting to hit all like my little starred ones. And when I say there were starred ones, I screenshotted 300 questions. Okay, so that's just like one casual day of me taking photos of the dogs, but. Right, but the, <laughs> and that wasn't like all of them. I screenshotted 300 that were like, Interesting enough. We don't have weenies and we want to know. I get it. We're not starting with weenies, by the way. No weenies. No, we're not starting with weenies. I, we're, we're gonna start with, um, we're not starting with weenies. Um, we're gonna start with um, a bunch and some of these need some fucking context, but there wasn't enough you know, words. So mm-hmm. we're just gonna do our best. Okay. And if we don't answer the question in the way that you wanted it to be ans- <laughs> answered, tune back next week. <laughs> we won't answer it then either, but we'll keep doing the podcast. Um, okay, so the first question, do pimples make a girl less attractive? Asking for my self-confidence. Uh, so From this is me answering based on your- On guys' perspectives. Perspective. Yep. Um, I mean, I think, I, I think overall, no, mm-hmm. because it feels like one of those things, even the most shallow person, um, if even if there's like a super shallow guy, it's one of those things that we talked about last week, like that's a temporary thing. Although it may not feel temporary. Like, I mean, I had a High phase where acne. I had- Felt like a life, a, a lifetime. You get fucking one pimple every eight I months. I said high school acne. Did you actually have acne? In high school? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I had like, I always had a pimple or two. Uh, one pimple or two. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, can we go back to uh, us having our own journey here? <laughs> Question number one, and you're already ripping my head off. Yeah, sorry, so sorry. I, I, so like, I understand what it feels like to feel like it's permanent. I had horrible cystic acne, maybe like five years ago um, from birth control and eventually and it me. went away and then. Yeah, and then all your problems went away. Now we're engaged. Went away. <laughs> uh, um, I, I, think, I think the overall answer is no, they do not make a girl less attractive. I would agree with the fact that pimples by and large Mm. by themselves do not make girls less attractive. Mm. I think the thing that is a lot more important thing to focus on is the fact that I think anytime you're not feeling your best, your entire energy is off. Goes off. So it's like whether it's the pimple or what the pimple does to you internally, Mm -hmm. I think that's the better question. Yeah. Okay. This is, I think, a weird inception thing that's going to be very difficult for you to um, answer. (sighs) Are you ready? Okay. What do guys actually like during blowjobs? What do guys actually like during blowjobs? And I love that you have to answer okay. what you think the average guy's thought is right um, before I do. This is great. I mean, it, it, no offense, but I just feel like guys are really not thinking about that much during <laughs> getting head. Like, I just think that it's, I think but, that taken. <laughs> girls probably are overthinking what a guy is thinking in that moment. Like, I think it's like, oh, girl, sucky, sucky. 
Yay. That's what I imagine that your brain is. Doing. Girl sucky sucky, yay. <laughs> it's not that far off. Like, I, I think you're 100% on. Like, we're not overthinking. It. Yeah, I was going to say, like, I don't think they're like, oh, I wish that she would caress the ball a little to the left. Yeah. You know what? The only time we're thinking about something is if it's just kind of uh, uh, so repetitive mm -hmm. and losing mm -hmm. energy and momentum mm -hmm. where it's like, mm -hmm. do something more. Yeah. But like, we're not all thinking about all the things. In sucky, fact, sucky. In fact, if I'm being honest, the worst thing that can happen is a girl's too good at it. You're like, okay, all right, okay, let, 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 I, I have enough. Let's yeah, move but on. some people are like, okay, let, let this is, uh, yeah. Yeah, I think you're you're spot on. Sucky, 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 sucky. <laughs> Yay. Um, <laughs> okay, this is probably a question that had about a nine thousand people asked. Okay. Um, do guys really compare their dick sizes with other guys? Oh, I think a hundred percent yes. Show me the one percent no. And I'll show you a liar. Yeah. And like, I don't think that it's necessarily like a-, a, a I have a question as a non-weenie holder. Go ahead. Does it give you, okay, so with the average guy having the mindset that has been drilled into society of bigger equals better, does it throw a wrench or like add another layer of having to think about this when you don't know if someone's a grower or a shower because for the most part, you probably mm. only see soft weenies when yep. like you're in change rooms or during sports or whatever, or it's like- a little weird if yeah. like Johnny's got like a raging hard right. boner. If all the dudes in the, in the change room yeah. at the YMCA yeah. after like, cause it's not like there's just like a whole football team of dudes just like with rock hard erections. I mean, I mean you know what? Maybe, maybe there are some, in some places, maybe there are some teams that are like that. <laughs> but for the most part, like you're chilling in, in, in like the bro, shower zone and I'm sure dudes for the most part are not growing. What if I told you that uh, you're you're so off and that dudes only shower with each other rock hard? <laughs> that would be fucking wild. Uh, so one, dudes definitely subconsciously, yeah. consciously, whatever, yeah. Yeah. are just like, hmm, okay. Uh, but to your point, yeah, I think that's like a big that probably it, gives guys like peace of mind though, like a little bit of buffer to be like, oh, that dude's dick was giant, but maybe that's like basically final four. I mean, I I have been in enough showers with 30, 40 dudes, whatever, mm -hmm. for elongated periods of time, like over months of like touring or playing on teams, whatever kind of thing. I have seen the smallest and largest soft penises mm. that I think any man should ever be forced to endure. What's the smallest? The smallest? Mm -hmm. You just don't. It just. It's just the 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 like. <gasps> it's the, the little head mush. Just kind of just sits on on a, on a, on a sack. And we don't, that dude, he could be sixty seven centimeters. Um, all said and done. Sixty seven centimeters. Okay. I'll, I'll, by the way, do Canadians measure their penises in inches or centimeters? Inches. Okay, you guys really got to figure out which yeah. ones you're going with. But anyway. you know what? It, it's, it's because American media has really, I feel like, uh, uh, set the standard of like what dick size needs did, to be. We own that. American yeah. said that. Okay, mm -hmm. good to know. Yeah. Uh, but like, I, I genuinely, I, I will always. There's, there's no day when I wouldn't be able to. You know how I, I can't visualize things. Yeah. But I can remember things. Mm -hmm. I will always remember the biggest flask like penis I've ever seen. Really? It was how many centimeters? I don't know what those are. I don't know that. But like, I wouldn't be shocked if it if it was nine inches soft. Nine inches soft? He, without question. I remember like- You know what's just so crazy and a little borderline scary is that like, there's just no world where it stays nine inches when it gets hard. Like, you know, it at least has to grow a little bit. And I knew his girlfriend. Oh my God. She wasn't six foot 10. I got it. Where did she put it? No, I, I genuinely, like I looked oh at that. God. and was like, okay, penises can be too big. It, they can uh, be too big. A hundred percent, 100%. That thing right there. But yes. also the the thought of being such a shower and we'll get into a thousand people who are like, what do you do with your penis? And insert normal task here. <laughs> but it's like, that for sure would become a problem. Oh my God, a hundred percent. Yeah. Like I, I, that, that's the thing that Have I think- Have you seen that Vice documentary about that dude that has giant balls? No. They're like super disruptive for his life. Do they have to like, like drain them? What? I, I've known dudes that have to drain I don't know if they have to nuts. drain them, but I think, I think the documentary follows him in um, getting them like surgically made smaller. Can you imagine made like smaller. being known as the guy with just fucking bowling Huge ball nuts? Huge nuts. Like that'd be cool for two weeks. Like it looked like 
It, I don't know, it was crazy. You saw his nuts? What? You saw like you saw the nuts? No, it is, you, didn't, you don't see the nuts, but you like can see- a full see... documentary about his nuts, you don't see his nuts? I'm gonna find it for you. Yeah, thank you. You don't see his actual nuts, but you can see exactly where they are in his pants because they're huge. Like he has to Got wear it. only soft pants. It looks like what would be a giant fupa basically, but it's nuts. Nupa. Nupa. I love it. Um, so yeah, d guys definitely compare dick sizes for better or worse. And uh, that, mm -hmm. I don't think it's ever gonna yeah. stop. This is a golden question. Okay. Is post nut clarity a thing? Oh, I feel like absolutely. Why? Uh, because I feel like you've got clouded intentions and your brain again. So when we were at sucky, 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 yay right. beforehand, I feel you're, ne oh, I just don't even know where to go with this one. You are like, <laughs> cummy, cummy, yay. That sounds like a song. Sounds like Kumbaya kind of. Cummy, cummy, yay. Cummy, cummy, yay. Cummy, 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 yay. Uh, so I feel like it's like you're, I just feel like you're on such a one track mind beforehand, you're not thinking about anything else. Right. And then I think once that is done, mm -hmm. your regular thoughts come back and you're like, oh yeah, I probably shouldn't have stayed out until four in the morning when I have to get up at seven. When I tell you that if men would just wait until after mm -hmm. they've came mm -hmm. to make the most important life decisions, yeah, everyone would be better off. Mm. No decision right. that's made prior to you not even realizing just how not much you're thinking about something. Is the post not clarity equal post masturbation? Um, so this is a thing that I think is really interesting. Oh, I can't wait. This is a science podcast, ladies and gentlemen. So guys with porn addictions oh. in particular, I was listening to, wasn't, it was some podcast with okay. a bunch of dudes. Mm. And like half of them are talking about how when they look at porn, when they masturbate, mm. but like they're trying to not, like they have a problem with porn. Mm -hmm. Like it's it's too much. They're trying to quit. They can't okay. stop it. They immediately, the moment like they're done, they like feel like they, they like race to X everything out. They're like, get it away from me. They're like, they feel disgusting. Oh, they feel gross afterwards. Yeah. Right, based yeah. off a of thing that they just did. Right. And I think that's probably the most like- Oh, so that's, that, no, that, so that is post not clarity. Yeah. It's post not clarity on what- it with yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. like, I think everyone's like post not clarity about, oh, how they feel about what they Partner just did or partners or, or whatever. life like, choices or whatever. It's, or whatever, it's yeah. never about that. It's always about themselves. Right. They're just reflecting it on mm. whatever the scenario is. Wow, post yeah. clarity. Yeah. Like, that's the pod title for sure. Well, <laughs> remember that. Um, so this is an interesting one. I think uh, there's such a, st a stigma, but do you ever feel guilty after sex? Like uh, if you feel like you're being used or um, do you guys ever feel sad at any moment? throughout that process. And we don't, we never talk about guys feeling used mm. sexually. In fact, there, I think there are some guys who would argue that guys can't be used sexually. If there are a hundred percent guys who would argue that. Um, I think now that would be more common than it was five, 10 years ago. Say more. What? Say more. Like, I think that guys are more in touch with their emotions now more than ever and are open to being more vulnerable that I think they would be more just like generally aware of like, like again, being a little more conscious than just sucky, sucky, yay. And being like, do I actually like this? But you know what I mean? Like, I just feel like, like, it's not, do I actually like, like this person? Do they actually it's, like me? Yeah, yeah, it's not even It's not even about that. Yeah, I think there's just more depth now and there's like less shame around being a little more sensitive and using more brain cells when it comes to sex and um, physical intimacy. I think that there are times in a guy's life uh, in their sexual journey, whether it's the second, third, fourth, fifth partner, whatever, mm -hmm. where they might have some level of feeling of like, is this good for me or do I want this, whatever. But even if they are, uh, I think introspective enough to come to that conclusion, mm -hmm. there's a very small chance they have a friend group that's mature enough yeah. to be able to bounce those thoughts of. Totally, that's what I'm saying. completely yeah. being shut down. Yeah, 100%. And I will say that's a perfect example of like, yes, I think sometimes guys do realize it, but it's for such a short amount of time right. before they tell themselves, yeah, let's, let's not bring that up. Let's right. not think about that. That's not a thing mm -hmm. that, whether or not they real, realize it or not, 
they can't really do anything about it. Right. And that's probably where we need to go in the next five, 10 years. Yeah. But I, I do agree. Uh, the idea of like guys being able to feel used as a conversation in general mm -hmm. is a new concept that I think most boomers uh, and older. And I think also too, like, I think we're speaking more to heterosexual relationships. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Well, I only have so much experience and- um, Yeah, it's all on Fortunately this. and yeah. unfortunately for mm -hmm. um, you, uh, I like women. Um, okay. What? <laughs> so this is a little more personal. Okay. Um, there's a clear answer. Mm -hmm. This person wanted to know, um, do I wear the pants in the relationship? Do you? Right. Do you, do you, right. do you, do you, do you wear do the pants I? in the relationship? Yes. Um, I think when it comes to oh, I can't certain wait. things, I'm trying to find the right <laughs> analogy for this. I think we've talked about this in the sense that like you wear the pants in the sense that like if she were to hit the fan, like you would just take full control of the situation. Right. If shit hits the fan. But I feel like on a day-to-day -day basis, I would say I wear the pants more so in like how we navigate in terms of like, like for example, when we make plans, they're typically because I have made them or your friends have texted me to make plans with us. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I think from this like an operational perspective. Yeah, from perspective, an operational standpoint. Like day-to-day -day operations, yeah. those pants are yours. 100%. But- the- um, The apocalyptic pants? The apocalyptic or like the, the thing where uh, I feel like when the situation calls for decisions that can be scary, that need to be answered really quickly. That, oh, definitely. That impact both of us. Yeah. I'm taking those 100% of the time. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah. And 100%. you uh, thoroughly uh, don't fight me on that. Oh yeah, no, no, you yeah. can you can have those. You can have those. I'll always remember the last time that there was an earthquake in LA when we, like, we both felt it. <laughs> this is the perfect example. And like, I remember <laughs> started to shake and I was like, oh, earthquake. I got up, got off the couch, went all the way over to the other side of our house, got underneath this really strong table because there was this big, <laughs> big, big, you know, just like strong wooden table above us. And I was like, oh, this will be safe. And I watched Lauren <laughs> sit in the same position <laughs> Looking up at the rafters, doing, <laughs> just shaking, making zero movements. No, I was just like, earthquake. What do I do? Ah! No, no, it was like, earthquake. And then I froze. And like, I was already and under Moose, the table. Moose and I, I was were like, still sitting on the couch. I was just frozen. And it wasn't, you know, I just, and I know that I can't use the defense that like, oh, I didn't grow up with like earthquake training because obviously neither did fucking you in the Midwest. But I just like, I, I just like, I was just frozen. And mm -hmm. it, it wasn't even necessarily fear. Because like I haven't experienced an, uh, anything traumatic to be like really scared of earthquakes. Nope. I also avoid all of those movies. Um, but I really just just paralyzed. I think to maybe answer this in a more concise way, when fight or flight kicks in, I probably wear the pants. Yeah, I would say that's a good that's yeah. a good way to uh, when, categorize. A uh, plan for a friend's hangout on a Thursday night. Mm -hmm. Lauren wears all pants. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all pants. Okay. Uh, okay, this is one that I, I don't understand. Is testicular tor torsion yeah. a fear of mine? Is it? I don't know what that means. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Because one of our good friends told us a story about how he almost lost his balls by accident. Believe his name? Really? Yes. Oh my God. Okay, I, a non-ball haver, I'm kind of scared of testicular torsion, but for some reason, for some, I, I associate that more with like younger guys for some reason. Right, what, what is it? Well, you would actually think that like the older the dude and the saggier the balls, the more opportunity there would be for testicular torsion or whatever. It's when um, uh, something gets all twisted and it's, <sighs> oh, okay, let me, let, again, science podcast. Let me get the, the proper podcast. definition here. Well, so the good news is that you're not scared of it and you don't live in no, fear. No, I don't live in fear. Okay, a twisting of the male organ that makes hormones and sperm, the testicle. Uh, when the testicle rotates, it twists the cord supply blood to the loose bag of skin, the scrotum beneath loose, the penis. The loose, guys, if you've ever thought your shit doesn't stink, <laughs> just know that you could be described as loose, loose bag of bag skin. bag of skin beneath the penis. This may, okay, next time penis. you do something, I'm gonna be like, God, you're such a loose, loose bag, bag of, of skin. skin beneath the penis. <sighs> God. This may occur after vigorous activity, a minor injury to the testicles or sleep. So I think our friend literally sleep? woke up one day and his shit had twisted. And 
as like certain doctors can massage it back into place. I know that sounds wildly predatory, but I think that like, that's like, that's your best case scenario is that there's like a few different like physical things that they can try and do to untwist it. Do you get to pick it. your doctor? Probably not. Like, is there headshots and is like the different rates? Um, okay, okay. Uh, uh, but I think sometimes you literally need surgery to undo the torsion, Tor torsion? Tension? Tor I, I don't know. Anyways, what? super glad that you don't live in fear of this um, because this did happen to our friend and he was able to get them untwisted. This feels like it falls in the like, shit I can't really help category. Oh yeah, no, I don't think so. Yeah, no, yeah. just wait until I wake up tomorrow, twist I mean, it. Your nuts are torsioned. You're gonna have to be the one that figures it out. Well, I think I'll just get you to jump around a little bit, jump and spin. No, I think we should try a couple of massage tactics first. Mm. Yeah. And sucky, just sucky, <laughs> sucky, sucky, yay. <laughs> She goes, she goes, mm, sucky, sucky. Uh, okay, great. Uh, this is a really, really scientific question. Okay. Um, how did I get my ass to look so good in those pants? And it's one Brought simple to answer. Brought you by Lululemon. Good jeans. Thank you, Donna. Truly. Oh, good jeans. I thought you meant like actual good, good pants as well too. Yeah, because not really. those, I, are you kidding? Those, those are amazing pants. How do you encourage guys to actually open up and express their thoughts and feelings? Um, uh, essentially the uh, antithesis of, Toxic masculinity. Oh, yeah. Um, make them listen to Wild Till Nine. That's a good start. That's yeah. a good start. Yeah, uh, and then no, keep listening. I, I truly do think that when a guy meets another guy that they respect mm. and sees that like they're not gonna physically explode if they decide that they might have an emotion or two that they could maybe share. Like, I think having an example in your life is like the first step. So, I mean, you can't just like go and pluck like a mature man who's most emotionally available and like put them in your man's life to be like, can you just like watch this man? This sounds like a business opportunity. But I think even like- Rent a friend. Rent, rent a friend, rent a mature man. Right. And um, it's like a, like big brother like the big brother program. Right. And we can just give fully grown adult men, just another man to be friends with who's more emotionally mature. But the problem is that man would also have to do something that uh, garners immediate respect out of the gate. So like a have to slam be, dunk or something. So they'd have to have shit. like that 10 inch soft yeah. penis. Mm -hmm. They'd have to have a seven figure bank account. Right, and a hot girl. Hot girl, yeah, yeah. all of the things, yeah. And then mm -hmm. they get up about the feelings. I do think though that even platforms like TikTok who you see like good looking dudes who obviously like get girls or whatever, talk about how it's not like just the triceps of a dude that turn a girl on, but also them being emotionally available. L listen, I love a good tricep. I really do. But I obviously. also like a guy with a good tricep and someone who is not gonna implode every time they're like, hey, I'm a little sad today. I think the perfect definition of uh, what we should all strive for mm -hmm. in this category is whatever Pete Davidson's doing. Truly, oh my God. Because it seems as if yeah. that guy has single-handedly figured out how to crack the code for- uh, I think his code, up. I think his code is funny though. Totally. Fun I think if you're funny and tall, that's a cheat code on life right there. So everyone who's not funny and tall, just fix that and you'll be good to go. Right, and you can you can call, hire a mature man now at 1-800. Yeah, yeah. but I, like in all reality, I don't think that it's any partner's job to make their other, partner or a potential partner or whatever yeah. else, uh, feel comfortable enough to open up. I think they just need to be ready for it when that person is ready to take that step. Like, I just don't think that you're ever gonna be able to like be the single handed like reason yeah. someone does or doesn't uh, feel like they can actually open up about some of like their most vulnerable feelings, mm -hmm. you know? This is it, once again, science. When you're hitting it from the back, yeah. do you look at the booty hole? I mean, I've got the cutest booty hole in the world, so I'm sure that Jeremy does, but. <laughs> <laughs> have we talked about this? I don't know. You just haven't, I don't even, I don't so, know where this started. So there's a lot of people who I think are self-conscious about this, um, uh, or maybe uh, don't want guys looking directly into their butthole, um, which is why I got this question about 19 times. Oh, really? A lot yeah. of people asked about it? Lauren is, uh, I would say convinced, but I would say Lauren is aware <laughs> of the fact that uh, as she puts it in her own words, she's got the cutest butthole in the world. <laughs> and like, when I tell you, I have no idea really what my butthole looks like. Cutest, one the, cutest it's in the world. Cutest, cutest in the world. Cutest yeah. in the world. Yeah. I just feel like it's the confidence that you have to elude. Also, I'm not someone who would 
ever really be caught in a scenario where I wasn't squeaky clean and would end up getting it hit from behind. You know what I mean? Like I wouldn't even end up in that position because I would be like, there's just no world where I would get there. Yep. <laughs> so anyways, um, I think I think guys do look, right? Well, it, sometimes it's hard not to. Right, because it's just like, it's right there. It's kind of close to what you're you know, yeah. doing down there anyway. I was thinking that. Yeah, I'm not someone who seeks it out, mm -hmm. but like it's there right. um, and we're still kicking. Mostly right. because you have the cutest butthole in the world. Right, and you make eye contact and you're like, hello. No, I look at it directly and I go, it's great to see you, cutest thing in the world. Oh, that's so nice, you're so lucky. Jesus. Um, okay, this is gonna be the hardest one for you to answer. I mean, everything's been not so bad so far, so hit me with it, give me a hard one. What does bro code encompass? Ooh, what does bro code encompass? Well, you're right, fuck, this is a hard one. I thought we we're gonna get just like more weenie yeah. and ball questions. I know. Um, what does bro code oh, we'll get encompass? I mean, I feel like when I think about it on the highest level, it is not hooking up with <laughs> the a girl that your good friend is currently hooking up with or has not given you permission to also pursue. Yeah, that's good. Good start. Keep okay. going. Okay. Um, I think also bro code is uh, bros before hoes. Ah, uh, yes. The age old sentiment. Yes, ye old. As my grandmother bros handed down to me. before hoes. Yeah. Um, and then that's probably about all I have. Yeah, I mean, a lot of that. I think it. Uh, there's many variations of this. Okay. And to be clear, every person, every guy in the world who is involved in bro code mm -hmm. in any capacity mm -hmm. has also completely broken it way more times than they've ever followed it. Right, right, like, right, right, right. I genuinely like bro code is like the idea of what we'd all want our friends to do if we're out in the room with them. I have a great example of a time that you broke bro code. Me? Yeah. When you slept with a girl in your friend's bed, that is breaking bro code for sure. Sorry, Rob. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say Rob, that's uh <laughs> And no, okay, but okay, okay, that was that was yes, against that was against on bro me. Code. That, that one, was on me. That was on me. But <laughs> the the fucked up thing and the other the other thing that fell out of bro code here, yeah. and this is a perfect example, is one of the guys that I lived with got mad at me for something completely unrelated and told Rob in spite, because he knew that Rob would be pissed if he found Ooh. out that I hooked up with some girl in his bed. Which he should be mad. Broke, bro code. Right, but you broke it first. Yeah, but I didn't have post not clarity on mm. my side. Right, he, but post not clarity would have been that you should have changed his sheets. I did after Rob almost beat my ass when he found out I did. That's not post not clarity. Right, but I did. I did. That's post beating. Clarity. Uh, yeah. 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 So that's an example of when when bro code was broken. Was broken. But at the same time, <laughs> had I found a way to request ahead of time because my room was on the other side of the house and it might have ruined, you know, the flow that I had going on with that whole scenario. Rob does not care about your flow. Um, hindsight 2020 and after seeing the reaction, hearing it and being friends with him 10 years later, yeah, he didn't he didn't care whether no. I got the nut that that evening. No. Yeah. No. Okay. That. Next question. <laughs> uh, can a guy, can guys feel a woman's IUD during sex? Um, th they shouldn't. Okay. They shouldn't. If you can, I would say that you need to go uh, see your gyno immediately because it's supposed to be in your uterus and your weenie is not supposed to be in the uterus. See, I would have said yes. No. Not always, but I feel like I've felt them before. You have not. I think I have. No. I'm almost positive. I have. No. I would... It's like a, uh, um, what I can only imagine, like one of those little like fake plastic hands that like reaches out. It's like just a little at the end. Uh, I, again, science podcast. Let me just double check, but I'm 95% sure that weenies don't go into the place that- What if you got really good hip motion though? Like you, you've got like hips that don't lie. I also can't wait, like, I'm just gonna die if it's like, yeah, no, there's no world. But like every guy's like, yeah, my dick's so big that I'm for sure smacking that IUD. That's not what I said. Okay, so you might be able to feel the string. So the actual IUD itself though is inside the uterus, which again is not where the wiener goes. But and, the string? And so if you do feel the IUD, something is for sure wrong. 
Okay, then why do I feel the string? What? The, the, the little string. Because the, um, the, uh, uh, okay. I'd like an apology. No. Okay. Okay, so one to two inches of that string are in the cervix, but the IUD is in the fucking uterus. If there's a two inch thing that like a penis can hit, okay. it for sure can feel it. IUD in uterus with strings. Your fucking search history I is know. gonna make for some seriously interesting targeted ads. Here we go. Okay. Okay. Here we go. I'm going to pop this on screen. Again, this is a science podcast. Okay. Do you see what I mean? The strings are, do, they, they're they dangling, yeah. right? And yeah. you could touch those. Yep. Realistically though, I, I don't know if you, I think this is in your head. I think you're like, oh, I'm swanging so hard that I'm touching IUD. But like, we need to go in here. Um. Okay. Feels like this is a little more of a targeted attack than I thought it was going to be. But sure. uh, I- Think you're wrong. I think you can feel it. I don't think it's a. It's like a, a like a distracting or a thing that like. Oh my god, I can feel it. But I would go out on a limb. I would bet a significant amount of money that says I have felt an IED before. I think that you've probably felt the strings. Right. Well, the strings. Right. Oh but, yeah, the strings. But how, yeah. Does it, how, do, how would I know what the difference is? What? I didn't put it up there. Right. I, I know, but I'm just saying that the weenie don't go where the actual IUD is. Right. But, but the pre IUD. Sure. Right. You can touch the strings. Thank you. <laughs> you can contest it. Congratulations. I rest my case. <laughs> uh, okay, this is really interesting. So many people had this question and it reminds me, I feel like of like high school, but uh, are guys really only friends with girls they're attracted to at least at first? Are guys only? So like would guys only want to be friends with a girl if he's attracted to her? Oh yeah, this is such a high school question. Yeah. Yeah. This it's like is such high school, question. even college and then like, Probably some workplace. Well, I feel like literally at the beginning, guys only see every single female as a potential mate. And then they decide from there if sucky sucky. This is how guys brains work. Literally sucky sucky. I think I would argue that there's subliminally this exact thing that goes on in everybody's head. It's just, does that subliminal moment manifest itself into actual thoughts or does it just drift into the distance? Mm, yeah, maybe. Um, you, you, okay, are you telling me that every single person that uh -huh. you look at, you wouldn't be able in a split moment to go, I would or would not sleep with that person? Oh yeah, yeah. I rest my case. I just think that guys in high school specifically mm -hmm. are less likely to be friends with people of the opposite sex that they're sexually attracted to um, for just the sake of being friends. I think that, I agree. I think the other Part of that that I think is not just like an excuse or even like, it's it's honestly just a, a I think a, it's situational, but because your brain and your body and everything is like a, just an active chemistry experiment when mm -hmm. you're a kid. Yeah. Even if you can consciously wake up and go, Sarah's a great friend. I like hanging out with Sarah. We have a good time on a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. You might go, also Sarah's got a great ass. <laughs> and like, <laughs> sucky, it sucky. just takes that one little realization to come, we were here and Literally, just there. Literally, high school boys are like ooga booga sucky sucky. You know, okay, here's what it is. It's not that there's not a world where they can't be friends with somebody that they don't find attractive. Uh -huh. All I'm saying is for whatever reason, if one hair is in a different place than it was last time, and that one hair being in a new place uh, is a light bulb moment for a guy. Yeah. Just, it, I think it just kind of clouds the judgment in that little short term uh, window. Okay. That's all. Okay. Did I answer that question? Sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think this is one of the most important things for individuals and couples to be able to like be on the same page about, mm -hmm. but thoughts and opinions on a girlfriend or significant other making more money than the guy. I mean, I think now more than ever people, it's, it's less, you know, of a traditional opinion that there has to be like the male breadwinner. Right. Um, I see, I still think people are terrible about this. It's, I mean, it's, it's not good. Yeah. It's literally not good. Yeah. I mean, you also just think about like how brutal the corporate world is even still with like maternity leave and shit yep. like that. And it's fucked. Like it's genuinely so fucked. And the fact that like, we won't have to like really go through that and that I could still be working the day that I'm giving birth. By the way, you'll probably have a brand deal from right, L'Oreal exactly. to the next day. Exactly. Yeah. Like having the vlog camera right. up the vagina. Right. But it's actually right where that IUD string is. Right, right, right. Yeah. You right. actually, you gaff it against it. You just like tie it in there. Yes, just, I like, see yeah. where the strings are. Mm -hmm. I see. Um, but I think that the corporate world is still really, really brutal with that. I think there's still a major pay gap 
And yeah. I think that the corporate world is still just like not made to accommodate the women of the world who they also expect to be like the human birth giver, which obviously like there isn't an option for the most part for males to do that. But they they just like, we just have- By the way, found- if there was, I would uh, raise my hand immediately. Yeah, you're in. Yeah. I'm subbing you, let's go tag in. <laughs> totally. Let's go. No, I think you're right. But also like now bring that back to a relationship. Um, to a relationship. Um, I mean, I don't know. I think it's again, situational, depending on obviously the two people in the relationship. I've personally never had an issue. I've never encountered a problem. I think- Lauren's like, uh, as someone who's made a lot of money for a long time, <laughs> a lot of time, I've never had any issues with guys not making as much as me. Um, I, you have to ask them. <laughs> no, but like I, I really have never- struggled with that where like a significant other has like resented me or like had that be a core issue in our relationship. Um, so I feel like- But I've, have you ever did anybody while you were making good money and they were broke? Yeah. And it didn't, no struggles? No. Nothing weird? No. Good. I, I mean, unless they were like really, really good at hiding it. Right. Which right. is definitely an option or maybe they like didn't love the idea of sometimes like me paying for- extravagant things. I feel like I, because maybe, cause I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I want to say that like, I was always like really sensitive towards that as well too, right. especially in one of my earlier relationships when I made much more because I just wanted to, I think I really focused on being like, I have the opportunity to do this and I want you to be there with me right. and just like focus less on like how much is actually going into it. Whether it was really expensive or like not that expensive, it didn't matter, but it was more about like focusing on it being a shared experience yep. and not passing up on the opportunity. I mean, your perspective and what you're, you're like outlining is what I hope most guys who make more money mm-hmm. than they're taking others also feel. Right. right, but I feel like I feel like when the girl makes more money, you you have to like take into account all the sensitivities and like for some people, I'm sure they fucking tiptoe around the subject. Well, I think it's all a reflection of themselves for the most part, right? For, it, the guy, yeah, 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 for, for a guy. But like also like the uh, was it Ali Wong's uh, stand up like, special on Netflix mm-hmm. where she's like, "Do you know what's the most powerful feeling in the world? Getting a blowjob from a woman who makes more money than you." Yeah, that's a good point. Like getting a blowjob from a millionaire. She's got a lot of things she'd be doing with her time. Yeah. And you know what she's doing? Sucky, sucky. Sucky, sucky, yeah. On you. <laughs> um, I think that I would have, uh, well, I've dated uh, plenty of girls who made a lot less than me. And mm-hmm. I've dated a couple of girls who have made more money than me. Mm-hmm. And I think that the key difference for our, me anyway, was never about them making more. The key difference is, Am I satisfied with what I'm doing? Right. Like, do I feel like I'm living up to my potential? Fulfilled. Because in the past, when I was like with someone who was making more money than me, I was not happy with what I was being able to make at the time. That was the thing that like, you could say, oh, you were insecure about that. No, I was insecure about like what I was able to contribute. Mm. Flash forward and, you know, things are fortunately really good. I don't think there's a world where any healthy relationship long-term anyway, Mm -hmm. can withstand one person thinking that they have to have that specific role no matter what. Oh my God, a hundred percent. I also just know that like, especially in like our, both of our careers, like there's going to be major fluctuations on both sides. I'm sure of it. You know what I mean? So it's like, if you're not comfortable, like with both sides of that dynamic, then I think you just got a little bit of work to do. But also it's like, no one is above a car accident. No, no one is above. are you getting an accident of any kind? Right. Like literally, it's it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. So um, anyway, I, that, my two cents anyway. Like it really isn't about whether the other person makes more mm-hmm. money than you. It really mm-hmm. is whether or not you are confident in your contributions right. as an individual within the relationship. Yeah. Okay, here's one that I got a dozen times at least. Do men actually care what vagina looks? <laughs> keep that, keep that in. <laughs> Just, just Do keep, men get sucky sucky we'll just, vagina? We'll just take a moment of silence for my ego. <laughs> Does men enjoy bad? No. Do men get a fuck what vaginas actually look like? Oh, for sure. A hundred percent not. Go on. I mean, like, unless it's got crazy teeth and it's like- uh, Have you seen the movie, Teeth? Teeth? There's a movie called Teeth and it's about a vagina with teeth. Shut the fuck up, really? Look it up. You know what though? Look that's a king, That's a king for someone. Look that's for sure. I need, you, I need you to look this up now. But the whole premise is a woman who has- teeth in her vagina and she goes around having sex with dudes and- Uh, teeth movie? Yeah, sure. Oh, it's on Netflix? Is it really? 
horror comedy. <gasps> oh my God. Wow, got an 80% on Rotten Tomatoes. That's truly impressive. 2008. Guys, wow. always, guys always say they want it tight. Wow. Didn't say how tight. Oh yeah. Oh my God. Example of vagina dentata myth. <gasps> when the encounter takes a grisly turn. Wow. Yeah. Wow, she's an active member of her high school chastity club, but she meets Toby. Nature takes its course and the pair answer. Oh my God, wow. That sounds like a good watch for this weekend. Uh, long story short, I if you lined up every vagina I have ever seen mm. right next to each other, yeah. and you said for every one that I identify correctly, you give me a million dollars, just keep your money in the bank. Keep your money in the bank. I wouldn't be able to remember one of them. Yeah. Like they just don't, like that's not like a- What about my adorable butthole? Oh my God, I put that against every other one in the world. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna count it every time. Thank God. But it's like, that's easy. It's the cutest one. Yeah. Okay, yeah. next no, question, easy. Just, yeah. This is an interesting one. And I wonder if you've ever thought this. Okay. Does your penis actually lean based on what hand is dominant? Meaning after you oh. masturbate for years. Oh, no, I don't think so. I don't, I, I don't think that like, but you know what though? After you see kids that suck their thumb for too long, and like my mom scared me out of sucking my thumb because she was like, you're gonna have beaver teeth, you're gonna have bug teeth from sucking your thumb. And like you see kids who suck their thumb for years and years, and they they have literally like reshaped the palate. The, 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 a retainer, yeah, basically. of the upper palate of their mouth. And so sometimes I'm like, but I, I don't think so. So I'm, what, gonna, I'm gonna vote no. So I would have said, I would have said no. And then I remember when I started, you know, high school football and, band camp mm -hmm. and you see a bunch of penises in a shower mm -hmm. and I realize that every other penis in the world besides mine is curved like crazy. Yeah. I think I th thought at that point that could be a thing. I was like, mm -hmm. wow, these dudes are out here jerking off. Oh. But then realize it's just natural It's just curve. curved, yeah, it's just yeah. curved. It's also like, even though, even if a guy jacks off like six times a day, right? And just say it's 15 minute sessions each time. So the like, average high schooler, yeah. The average high schooler. But that's still not gonna account for the amount of hours that you would need to like reposition like, your literal body composition. You I, know? I'm sure at a certain point, you could probably do some damage that would make it go one or the other. Like, even if you put your dick in a cast for a couple months, I bet it wouldn't, you know, cause it's not, you're not resetting a bone. Er. Next. That was tough. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I don't think so though. No, as yeah. far as I know, no. But again, once again science yeah. podcast. Um, all right, let's go on. This doesn't really have to do with guys at all. Okay. But, um, what was your plan for your future when I was in high school? What was- So what was your plan for the future when you were in high school? Okay, so when you were in high school, yep. what do I think your plan was when you yep. were in high school? Yep. Okay, so you were going to, you were doing music, but your grades were ass, right? Yep. So you were doing- well, What was my plan? Y yes. Okay, can, I, can I just summarize it in one little- Hit me. Fucking figure it out. I love you. Next I, question. Like my- <laughs> My mother would have told you she wanted me to be a lawyer. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, how many years of school? How expensive? How much debt? What do they start out making? Yeah. Uh, no. Uh, you would you would have made a great lawyer. We would never be able to be together. You say that now and I'm in sales. Basically the same thing. Not the same thing. You were a stay at home fiance. True. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, my mom wanted me to, be, me to be a lawyer. I was going into music, but I didn't like have a plan for how I was mm -hmm. going to do music full time. It just was like, I, honestly, all I know is that the people that I'm surrounded by, like by in my hometown, don't inspire me. Mm -hmm. And I get a lot more inspired by people that I feel like I meet elsewhere. So I'm gonna go elsewhere. Um, we're gonna do another separate one of these that are wedding related too. Ooh, yeah, Cause there's so many of them, but I didn't yeah. even wanna like cross them. Um, okay, this, I'm gonna combine a couple of these um, into a, a, a more unanimous question. But okay. uh, girls were really curious if guys ask and share and kind of compare Mm. Their their sex lives with partners with their friends in like behind closed doors. Oh, I mean, if they do, it's they're like, yeah, I was putting it down for six hours. She came fourteen times. It was crazy. When I tell you that, the, <laughs> the probably the biggest difference between being in high school and college, yeah. and being single in your late twenties and especially like thirties, you're one hundred percent correct for like twenty six and below. Yeah, yeah. now. I'm not kidding. If you hear a guy talk about how they got with a hot girl, it's always, I gave her without question the worst three minutes and 14 <laughs> seconds of her life. The fact that she responded to me when I texted her the next day is a miracle Shocking. in and of itself. I am so embarrassed and I cannot wait to do it again. A hundred percent. That's exactly. That yep. is, that is yep. the difference, like the, the, the main difference between like the high school mentality of like, mm -hmm. I'm a fucking porn star. I'm a fuck God. I am 
better than everyone. Uh -huh. And I want you to know that I'm better than everybody. And I, you probably like that girl. And like, I fucked her better. And now it's like, I'm so wildly embarrassed by- I love your my, three minutes and 18 seconds. But like, well, babe, of course, it doesn't apply to me. This is like general knowledge, totally, of course. Totally. Yeah, Six yeah, hours yeah, putting yeah. it down, yeah. At least yeah. I have nothing better to do. Of course. I, God fucking, yeah. uh, just the thought of having to keep up that persona as an adult, like a real adult. That's embarrassing. Embarrassing, like would not fly. No. Even, even in the locker room. No. I'm telling you, like, Every dude would start to just shit on that person yeah. for even pretending or thinking that they might be able to actually do any things they just said. Because everyone's been around long enough at that point that they know it's not true. Yeah, without question. So like, yes, they definitely share, but it really does become more like, you'll know when a guy actually starts to have genuine feelings for a girl when you're friends with that guy, because mm -hmm. you'll never see them again. <laughs> Wait, I'm not, Craig, haven't seen him in over a year. I'm, the, there's no bigger telltale sign about a guy's true intentions, yeah. then you just never hear from him when again. He just disappears. But when you, when you do or hear or see from him again, it's like no time has been lost. Totally, yeah. Everything's great. 100%. But they don't let you know how they're feeling. No. They just replace your friendship with their significant other. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. Um, and lastly, the question that had, and I did count, 43 <laughs> different variations. <laughs> so this is asked 43 times, uh, by far, the thing that every woman apparently who watches this podcast wants to know, uh -huh. and I know that it's a woman that's asking the question because- It's a some, weenie question. Some variation of, does it float? When I tell you that this was the first time Jeremy and I ever took a bath, I think I asked this before we got into the tub or I think we were sitting in the tub and I was like, I just realized this. I just, I just realized that weenies float. It just bobs around. Buoyant. Like a little apple. Little apple. Hmm. Like a big apple. Uh, like maybe like the whole orchard. Like the whole orchard, it just bobs around. Just, just like bloop, bloop. Just there. Bloop. And like- Just when, floating. And when you go below it, it just goes this. It goes up, straight up. And about, here's the question. Yeah? Is that universal across the board? It's gotta be. No one's got a, like a lead You're telling me weenie. fucking HBO documentary nuts? His, his are the same as mine? Well, your nuts don't really flow. Your nuts, I feel right. like are more sinkers. I got sinkers? I got sinkers. I got sinker nuts? You got sinker, you got sinker loose bag sack nuts. Oh my God, there's nothing, I'm not kidding. I think the thing I'm probably most excited about in my life, yeah. not my height, not my uh, teeth, not it's the fact that Is I don't that, have low balls. Oh yeah, you know, it's brutal too because they just keep getting lower. Right, like they're the highest they're ever gonna be right now. Yeah, right now. You gotta start at a good they're place. They're lower even now. Right. right. Now they're lower. When we started this conversation. Now right. they're lower. Thank God. Yeah. I'm starting at a decent place. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. And- No, seeing a weenie float was like, not to not to like desexualize your weenie, but it's the cutest little thing I've ever- mm -hmm. We keep using that Lower little. little. Mm. It was the cutest floating bobbing weenie I had ever seen. Just cause it was just like bleep, bleep, mm. bleep. You said, wait. And you refer to that as if there's others that you'd seen in- It was the first time I'd ever seen like, like I think I'd, it's ever, it's the first time that I'd ever been sitting across the tub, just like observing a floating weenie. I will say for everyone who's not, you know, super experienced sexually, you do go from uh, only really being uh, naked or intimate with somebody in a fashion where it's like, it's a performance. Yeah. It's like the best version of yourself. Right, right that's what I mean. It's, right. like, it's like, this was just like, relaxed state weenie. There's only so many times when you're sitting across in the same tub as a six foot four uh, guy naked sitting. Uh, face to face. Right, but like I'm also just sitting crisscross applesauce uh, in the tub. Yeah. With weenie just doing. With, the with, bob. With the waves. The bob. Yeah. And with that, <laughs> uh, I'd like to put a, a, a pin in <laughs> Ask Fiance Jeremy oh any of your God. questions. We're gonna do a wedding slash more uh, engagement relationship style one of these later. Um, but I think it's fascinating that the same half dozen questions for the most yeah, part- just over and over. Or what everybody wants Repetition. to hear. And like, we'll go over them again if we need to, totally. Sure. Yeah. I just like, there's just something about like, none of those questions were something that I feel like people should be embarrassed to ask ever. I haven't been. Right, right. <laughs> Did you have any questions for fiance Jeremy? No. None? No. Not even a little bit? Oh, Not even so. one? No. I have so many questions for fiance Lauren. Okay. Well, not for this pod. Okay. Um, Next week, we might have a special guest. Oh shit, is that next week? Yep. 
Oh, uh, it's two weeks. Never mind. Two weeks, two weeks, I was going to say. Um, we've got some special appearances coming up. Yep. Yep. We've- um. Yeah. Sorry, I did nothing to add there. Just nothing. Lauren put in a lot of effort this podcast and we appreciate it for that. I, this is so fun. Being on the side where you just to react and have fun. I, by the way, I have a lot more fun when I get to be like exposed directly to people's like curiosity. Usually that's me. Because it's so like- it's so interesting. It's so you learn pure and so much. But yeah. it's like the way people ask questions is so, like, it's so insightful. Yeah, hundred percent. I just want to like, put it all together. Lot. I wish there was a place we could just like have a, a have a tilly con mm-hmm. and just get like, everyone get there, not to hang out with us, but like, all right, you're all here, meet each other. Right. Go. Go. Um, so look out for Wild Till Nine Fest in Latvia in 2027. <laughs> uh, other than that, anything else? That's Buy it. your merch. Buy your merch. Um, love you all. See you next week. Goodbye. Bye.